Today, we are going to be looking at the Feed the Beast mod launcher. I'm going to be showing you absolutely everything there is to know about this app so that you can get up and running with modded Minecraft as quickly as possible. So, to download the app, first and foremost, you're going to want to go to www.feed-the-beast.com forward slash feed the beast dash app. And I will put a link for that down below. You're going to want to download it for the platform you're on. I am on Windows. I'm going to assume that you know how to install a program, etc. This does need Overwolf, which it should prompt you to get as well. Bing, bang, bong. There we go. So upon logging into the app, you're going to be greeted with this homepage. And you're going to notice that there is six tabs on the left. We're going to be starting from the top of the homepage and working our way down to settings and going through each tab individually. And I will put timestamps below for each tab in case you're looking for something specific. If you do have any questions or I have missed anything, do let me know down in the comments below or join my Discord. There will also be a link below. I am very, very active in Discord and on YouTube and I try and answer all of your comments and queries as soon as possible. So, Starting with the home page, what you're going to see here is the featured mod packs from Feed the Beast. You can see here Feed the Beast Inferno, Stone Block Free. It's generally going to be more of their latest packs. And you can just go and press get and download that directly. You can also see up here you've got your recently played. And it is going to tell you the uh, updates are available. So these are the mod packs that you have already installed and you have recently played. But when you, know, you can play... And here or click into it to go to the profile we're not going to go in that way we're actually going to go straight down to the next one which is the library so this is specifically the packs that you have already installed and you can see here we have stone block free i'm gonna not press play but i'm gonna click into it which is going to bring up the profile of this mod pack now just by the way I actually do run the Warwick Club Gaming Network, which is a modded Minecraft gaming server network. If you click the Discord link down below, you can join any of our unwhitelisted public servers. They're all incredibly active. We have an incredibly active Discord community. We have Vault Hunters, Roguelike Adventures and Dungeons 2. We have Enigmatica 6 Expert, Stone Block Free, which is this one here, and loads of other servers. We're also launching a Prison, Factions and Pixelmon server soon. So please do think about joining the Discord below and also Again, if you have any problems with your own servers, mods, mod packs, Java, anything like that, join our community. We have an amazing team that will answer any of your questions. So, now that we're here and we're looking at the profile, you can see there's an update available. If I click on this, it's actually going to show us the versions. So you can see version 1.6.1 and the, uh, the hotfix that that is and what it's changed. And you're going to also see 1.6. So over here, you can see we're on version 1.5. So if we click update, it's actually going to update us to version 1.6 and then 1.6.1. And you can see the entire change log here. If you want to keep on the same version, nothing's going to force you to do that. If you also want to go back versions, you can click on versions over here. And you can see if it's beta or if it's been archived or if it's a release version. Uh, you can click on that. We can click on it and we can see what mods have been updated what mods have been added, and any changes within those mods. So if you're having a specific bug or issue, you may notice that it may have been fixed or, you know, in a certain version, or you might actually want to regress to a, a past version where things had, you know, not changed and you prefer it that way. If you are running a server, then you can click server files. And the actual difference here is that when you're downloading a pack for your client, if you are a player on a server or you're just playing on single player, it's going to be downloading a certain set of mods. Now, when you're installing a server, there are different files that you need. And there's also certain mods that are meant for client side, which may actually crash your server on startup or your server just doesn't need on, etc. And I would always recommend, unless you absolutely know what you're doing, to download the server files and make sure you're clicking on the right version for that as well. If you are changing versions, I would always recommend, as it says here, backing up your world. And I will show you how to do that in just a minute. So you can see here when we last played it, the total play time we've got. I've got uh, nine minutes in total. <laughs> uh, what version it's on, when it released, when it updated, and then all of the tags here. And if you scroll down, there's a nice description that Feed the Beast give you of the pack. If you want to see exactly what mods are involved, you can click on here. And then you can also search. So if I search for Apple, you can see Apple skin there. 
and this is a complete uh, list of all the mods, and you can see also the version of the mod that you've got on there. You can also click add more mods if there is a mod you would like to use. This is very slow compared to Curse Forge, but I'm going to type in here FTB for Feed the Beast. These have some great server-side mods that I use on all of our servers that we host. And you have things like Feed the Beast Foot Library or Feed the Beast Chunks. Like we use this mod, for example, so that people can actually claim their own chunks while on our servers. And you could just click install and that'll install it straight onto that profile. You then have public servers, which appears to have none. I don't know if that's because down here I haven't signed into Mind Together or not. I'm not sure. I don't have a Mind Together account at the moment. Then we can go up here to settings. So, first of all, you can rename it if you want to give it its own little nickname. You can then see, obviously, the resolution, Java version, and Java runtime arguments. I wouldn't touch unless you absolutely know what you're doing. For example, Java runtime arguments is where you're going to put in your minimum and max RAM used. You can use this to change how garbage collection works, etc. Again, really wouldn't touch that unless you absolutely know what you're doing. If you do need help with stuff like this, feel free again to join my Discord link down below and I'll help you out. And then how much you're going to give the instance memory-wise. So what I see a lot of people doing is they load up the pack and it just crashes or doesn't load. And that's because sometimes it could be defaulted to like 2 gig. And for most large mod packs with over, say, 150 mods or so, depending on what those mods are, I would generally give it between 6 and 8 gig. I generally give mine about 12 gig. You don't want to give it too much, but you don't also want to give it too little. And then, remember we had that share code? So... I don't know if I showed you this, actually. Uh, in library, you can click import. In here, you can use a share code. And that's what I'm going to show you in a second, where basically, if you're telling your friend, hey, I found this great mod pack, you should play it too. And they're like, oh, cool, can you share it with me? This is how you share it. So you use a share code, they put in the code that, they, that you give them or they give you, and it'll install it from Feed the Beast. And then also you can import it as a zip file from CurseForge. If you want to see my CurseForge video tutorial, there will be a link down below to that as well. If we go back into Stoneblock, go back to Settings, Share Mod Pack, that's where you're going to get that share code. If you click this button here, it's going to upload it to Feed the Beast Cloud, and then it's going to give you a share code so that your friends or whoever can then you know download it to, uh, to, to, to their profile. And that will include anything custom you've done to it. You can also delete it. You can enable cloud updates, uh, sorry, uploads. And then also you can click open folder. And what that's going to do is it's going to open the folder of where this instance is. So if you want to go into the mods folder, for example, if you have downloaded a mod from the internet, you can just drag it straight into the mods folder. Feed the Beasts app won't stop you from doing custom things like that. You can do whatever the hell that you like. If you want to put in resource packs, you put them into here, schematics, etc. The saves folder is actually where your single player worlds are going to be. So always make sure to update and back up that folder before you update your pack. And ideally, you'd actually update this entire folder to your desktop before updating your pack, just in case anything goes wrong. And then, you know, if it does, you could just drag all of this back into here and voila, it's basically on the old version again. You then have the three dots here. And this is going to give you options of playing offline. Settings, which is again going to bring you back to here. You can also open specific folders. So if you're a bit nervous and you don't want to go into the you know the instance folder and start messing around in there, you can actually go in here and it'll take you straight to the worlds folder or the mods folder or the config folder, etc. And it's a bit you know easier if you don't know what you're doing as much or you're new to it. You can also duplicate the instance. So if you want to start messing around with adding different mods or, you know, just fiddling with stuff or having, you know, having a look into the folders and that and changing things around and seeing what happens and learning more about it, you can duplicate the instance so that basically you have an identical one that is not affiliated with this one. So you can do that without worrying about breaking anything, basically. And then again, you can share it here and delete it. So that is everything for the library page. Then we have the Browse tab. In here, you can quite literally search in the search bar up here for mod packs. There's two tabs, Feed the Beast and CurseForge. So Feed the Beast is going to be all of the Feed the Beast team's mod packs here. For example, Feed the Beast Academy, which is fantastic if you're new to modded and you want to learn all about you know the big mods that are out there. It's a fantastic one I'd recommend. And then you can move on to Feed the Beast University. Then we have the CurseForge tab. And in here, you can search for... Uh, Vault, 
and it should come up with Vault Hunters. Here you go. Here you go. So you can install Vault Hunters free. This is one of the servers that we run on our network. Um, and then you can look through all of these. But without searching, it will only show you um, the Feed the Beast ones still. Then you have Discover, which is blank at this time. Can't actually remember what they put here, if they ever really do. Um, and then you have the News, uh, which is, you know, latest released uh, mod packs, etc. And that's very simple. Then you have Settings. Now, when we were looking in the library, you could see that we're amending the settings for each individual profile. However, what you change in here will change it for every mod pack that you then install. So if you want to change your default settings, this is where you do it. Resolution custom java arguments the location of where it's actually saving your instances downloads so how many cpu threads the download speed and cache life in the app do you want to close overall on exit so basically will it still sitting your system tray or not do you want to use the beta channel which is you know beta releases and do you want to enable mind together chat there are integrations which currently is just mind together again and then also proxy settings and app info you can also click down here to set up a server with Creeperhost and you can change or add accounts down here and log in and out, etc. And that is literally everything there is to know about the Feed the Beast mod launcher. I really hope that this guide was really useful to you. I hope I didn't go too fast or too slow, but if I did, let me know. I always love to hear your feedback and the kind of stuff you'd want. If there's a certain mod tutorial, like if you're trying to find a tutorial for a mod and there's nothing on the internet for it at all please let me know because those kind of mods where there's just nothing out there i love nothing more than learning it for you guys and then doing a tutorial on it and uh, again i do own and run a massive minecraft mod server network again click the discord link down below and you can join it there's no whitelisting it's a really friendly community will help you with your server any java issues and if you're even playing on single player, you know, I'm here to help. I love helping you guys. And, uh, you know, please do click that subscribe button as well. I really, really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in next week's video.